is a special presentation of ABC Sports. Number one in college football, roams the panhandle of the Gulf. As swift as the autumn wind, the Florida State Seminoles dashing, slashing, pursuing, defending, trying to prove their lofty posture is worthy, guided by the crafty chief, Bobby Bowden. I, I just couldn't ask for a better opportunity and something I want more than to come into Michigan and try to show the country what this Florida State football team's got. But when you venture into the biggest house in football, you better come prepared lest ye perish at the hands of the big burly resident. For this is a house of history, a house of pride and tradition. So says the master of the house, Coach Gary Moeller. Well, I think you'll see some tradition of Michigan come through today. I, I think uh, the kids will play hard because they're at home and because all their, their people are watching and they want to represent this university well. This then is the fight to be called number one. Number three means the 99th consecutive game here at Michigan Stadium with more than 100,000 people in attendance. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. And what a setting we have here. You know, this business of being number one has been elevated to almost unseemly importance in our society. But it's there, and you deal with it. Actually, in college football, being number one only has meaning after tax time next year, because that's when alumni start writing checks. But it's the pursuit of it, I guess, that makes everything so worthwhile. And both coaches and teams today admit being stimulated by it. And how fortunate we are to be able to see this, the, the setting, the quality of the two teams on a day like this. It is indeed football heaven as number one Florida State plays number three Michigan on ABC Sports. We'll have analysis with Bob Greasy in a moment. The Florida State Seminoles. They have defeated BYU, Tulane, and Michigan Stadium, and now comes the big one. Nine straight wins. That's the best in Division 1A. They are ranked number one. They were ranked number one in the preseason polls. Nobody since 1985 has started out a preseason ranking number one and finished that way. That team was Oklahoma. Bobby Bob, coach of the Seminole, 16th season, 135, 42, and 3. He is indeed crafty. And Bob Greasy, I know you have great respect for the man Bowden because his offense is imaginative, but he's got a cool hand named Casey Weldon to run that thing. Well, his offense comes in ranked in the top five in the country, and in Casey Weldon, he has the number one rated quarterback coming into this ball game. But Weldon has some help in that backfield, and fullback Edgar Bennett and halfback Amp Lee. Together, those three, think that I think, make the best offensive backfield in college football. And of course, Bowden on the sideline, the little maestro, I think calling plays, nobody does it better. Now, Michigan comes in with something, uh, I think, a new tool in their arsenal, and Elvis Gerback with confidence and what appears to be uh, an intent for a possession passing game. Well, they like to throw the ball short and control the ball. Gary Moeller likes to control the ball, keep it away, especially against a team like Florida State defensively that is so quick and so fast. Now, that's not to say that Michigan doesn't have any speed and quickness because on the outside, they have Desmond Howard, who has scored six touchdowns in the first two ball games, and Florida State will have to deal with him somewhere along the line. But I thought Ricky Powers played a major role in their win against Notre Dame because he literally almost single-handedly carried and held that ball in the last six minutes. Well, he carried the ball 38 times, and Michigan controlled the clock 2-1 to one against Notre Dame, and that's the exact the game plan they'd like to use here today against Florida State. What do you see as, as uh, home field uh, here now? Because... Uh, Really, uh, the sound is not a factor here. The sound goes away from the playing field in this particular stadium, as strange as it may seem. It's not as intimidating as some stadiums that we go around to. Number one, I think the game uh, is going to favor, uh, the field is going to favor Michigan because of the fact that they're playing on grass. 
Florida State is much quicker and much faster. And if, if this game were on artificial turf, I think it would really favor uh, Florida State. But Florida State plays well on the road. They're a good road team. Serious history between these two teams. There's not much to it, actually, only one game previously. That was a 20 to 18 win for Michigan here in this stadium in 1986. And the point to be made about grass is obviously they haven't had grass here since 1968. They've been playing on a rug. But they plowed it up, and Jack Root will document that story for you because it was one of the engineering feats of our generation because they had to lower the water table and all that kind of stuff. But Bobby Bowden bringing all of the speed in here and the imagination that we talked to in a conversation with him yesterday, we talked about the Florida State speed and how do you use it against Michigan. Michigan does the best job of dis disguising their coverages and defenses of anybody we've played. And so we're going to have to find out as we take the ball. And uh, I don't know how successful we'll be with that. But we've got the whole package in now. We've got in crosses, outs, corners, takeoffs, everything. And finally, the Michigan Wolverines will make their entry into the Great Bowl. Boston College and Notre Dame, they have won eight straight win today. They will own the longest win streak in Division 1A. Coach Gary Moeller, second season as head coach. He's 11 and 3. First time he's squared off against Bobby Bowden. A big offensive line. They just want to run right at uh, Florida State and slow them down. And Florida State has that great team speed. They're ranked number two in the nation in total defense. Don't see any weaknesses. No, oh, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Not very many there. Desmond Howard will return the kick. Back with him will be a freshman, Tyrone Wheatley, a running back. Howard is a wide out, and you saw the graphic where he has been so successful. Dan Mowry's kick is very, very short. Up man, fullback, Barney Leggett takes it. Michigan will start out from around the 30-yard line. And the Seminoles are already flying all over the place, and they will be all day long. Quarterback is Elvis Gerbach. You can see what he did against Notre Dame. It was nearly a, an NCAA record-setting performance. It was a Michigan record-setting performance. The rest of the backfield lines up with Leggett at fullback. Ricky Powers, very strong, powerful running back at tailback. Yale Van Dyne is the new man outside. This is Powers. And Ricky Powers, you will not arm tackle him. He's one of those running backs that gets stronger and stronger as the day goes on. Up front, and here is the real strength of the Michigan offense. Doherty, Skeen, Elliott, look at the right side. Elliott, Capozo, and uh, Skrepanak. Look at the size of those guys. Big Greg, he's at 325, give or take 25. Desmond Howard going in motion on second down and five for Michigan, playing on real grass at Michigan Stadium. Field is flat, prescription turf. Throw it to the sideline. It is intercepted. Florida State was sitting and waiting for it, and Terrell Buckley has scored a touchdown. How do you do? Just a little quick hitch pattern. Gerbach throwing to Desmond Howard and Terrell Buckley, who has five return touchdowns in his career. Take a look at it now. Buckley on the left has picked off six touchdowns, uh, six passes last year, and ran two back for touchdowns. Already ran one back this year for a touchdown. He is the big play man in that secondary. That'd be a great matchup all day. Lowry for the point. It's good. Very poor judgment by Gerbach in throwing the ball because Howard was not available at all. It was a good day. Playing these guys are hard enough. Playing them with a handicap of seven points, uh, not advised. And that's exactly what Gerbach has done on his one, two, three throw gig on that second play of the ball game. Mowry's kickoff is up the elevator shaft. I mean, it doesn't go anywhere, 
And Florida State is there about the time the ball arrives. Gail Van Dyne makes the reception. Michigan starting at the 34. Quick hits. Watch the one, two, three, and throw. Gerbach looks to his left initially. Now Buckley is too good to do this on. You just can't go one, two, three, and throw. Buckley reads the set of the quarterback, which he should. Watch him here on the left side. Buckley will eat this up all day. This will be a great matchup all day. Howard will get him later on in the ball game, but that that'll be a key matchup all afternoon. It's seven nothing on the 40 yard interception return for the touchdown by Buckley. Here's Michigan first down at the 34. And this huge crowd of more than 105,000 pretty quiet right now as Ricky Powers on a little cutback will get it out to the 37 for a pickup of three yards. That's where uh, the main strength of this Michigan offense is located, is along the line of scrimmage. The defense for Florida State, they'll go with three down and use four backers, and those backers are really active. Dinkins, Jones, Carruthers, and uh, Freeman. Carruthers is from East uh, Lansing, up the road. Yeah. Second down and seven. Powers again. Powers works his way on up across the 40 to nearly the 43. Does not get a very good spot on it. And he's going to need a couple of more yards on third down. The secondary for Florida State. Your safeties will be John Davis and Richard Coase. The corners are McCorvey and Buckley. And Mr. Buckley's made his presence felt already. McCorvey's a is also a tough guy and can really run. And behind him is a guy named Corey Fuller who runs a 4-3-5-40. So there is speed, speed, speed in the white church. Third down and two. They'll go back to Powers, and Powers will have the first down and then some. See, there, there you go. I mean, they're just moving them off the ball right now. Howard Dinkins, outside linebacker, makes the tackle for Florida State. Well, Michigan has won uh, the last three plays as far as power is concerned, but Buckley and FSU, there you take a look at Buckley. He now has six touchdowns on returns, three punt returns, and three interceptions for touchdowns in his career. Ricky Powers again from uh, across midfield, the 49, give him four yards down to the 45 as they play on what Ricky Powers calls my feather bed. Here's Jack Aroot. Keith, it took $2.23 million to renovate this field, getting rid of the tartan turf and putting in the prescription athletic turf. On top of that, they lowered the field by three and a half feet. Now, that would have made it two and a half feet below the water level. What they did is they put in drainage all the way around this that pumps out 800 gallons a minute, or this field would be underwater. It's awfully deep, too. It looks kind of like the rough at a golf course right now. It's three inches thick to try and slow FSU down. Powers again on a carry over the right side, running behind Cocoso. Carruthers uh, steps in to make the tackle for Florida State. And again, Michigan's now looking at uh, third down and about three. Powers already six carries and 30 yards in the game, and he figures to get probably 30 or more carries before the day's over. He'd love to, and Elvis Gerbach would love to give it to him that many times. Uh, that first pass, the interception uh, by Buckley of Gerbach's got to shake his confidence just a little bit. Third and three. Let's see if they go back to the patch. Nope. It's Powers. And Powers is very close to the first down. He may be close enough to go on fourth if they have to. Carl Simpson, Jr. from Baxley, Georgia, and McCorvey made the tackle. Awful lot of people on both teams from the local area, maybe even more from on the Florida State team from in that northern Florida region. McCorvey is from Pensacola. He doesn't quite have it. Now Gary Moeller's got to make a decision. First tough call of the day right here. Sure, uh, Moeller does not want to turn the ball over very often to uh, Casey Weldon and FSU's offense. He made a big call against Notre Dame a couple of weeks ago on fourth down, but that was late in the ball game. Yeah. He needs he needs time of possession right here. He needs to keep the football. And about six inches. You got one on one on out of here with Howard. 
you don't make it though you're going to give up the football back on the 40 yard line they give it to the fullback Marty Leggett the junior out of Colorado Springs and 225 pounds of Leggett gets the first down well that's your bread and butter if you're Gary Moore you come in with the power you want to control the ball up front and if you don't go for it on that one uh, that that was more important to make the first down than to try a long pass to uh, to Howard, who was covered one on one by Buckley. Yeah, they won't get it this time, will they? <laughs> <laughs> well, Buckley's confidence will grow too as the day goes on, and uh, that's a two edged sword. First down from the Florida State 38 yard line. On first down, Durbach's pass to the sidelines is good. Ball was a long time getting there. Long time getting there, and I'll tell you what, Desmond Howard made the catch, but Ter Terrell Buckley's eyes were getting pretty big. He almost got there. You're exactly right, Keith. He was wide open. There you go, one on one again. The two outstanding players that are running off. Buckley slips just a bit. The ball is in the air a long time. I think what uh, Gerbach saw was wide open. He just wanted to make sure he completed it. First down for the Wolverines. The ball at the Florida State 28, 23 yard line. Contact. Don't know if there was movement or whether it was an encroachment by the defense, but the middle guard and Matt Elliott were bumping heads. Against Florida State. Caney made the contact. John Nealon is our referee today. It is a mixed crew. ACC and Big Ten. So move it five yards, make it first down and five. As the ball goes inside the Seminole 20-yard line. This is Ricky Powers across the 15, down to the 13-yard line. This is power football, and this is the kind of football that uh, probably will work most of the day for the Michigan Wolverines. It's going to force the <laughs> Florida State people to do to gamble well, something. They're, they're Mich Michigan's counting on it working all day, and, 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 and uh, that's what the Moeller wants, and that's what Bobby Bowden was worried about, running right at him to uh, really cut down on that speed from sideline to sideline that Florida State has. Ball is just short of the 12-yard line. It's another first down for the Wolverine. going to get the ball for the first time on offense Bob. for the first time versatility a balanced run and pass attack and for Michigan a weakness inexperienced in the secondary although they're talented they're inexperienced well we played uh, four minutes and 55 seconds in the first quarter and each team has a touchdown we might need a three digit scoreboard <laughs> Harris and Macmillan are the deep people Macmillan is the principal man back there they want to have the ball he's a red shirt freshman on Albertson out of Portage Michigan Ready to kick it off. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Left 
puts it down to this 18-yard line where Harris has it. And comes out across the 30 to the 34. So the Seminoles start with good field position as Casey Weldon, fifth-year senior, who is a native son of Tallahassee, comes out. He's 9-0 as a starter. The rest of the backfield behind him, speed everywhere. Edgar Bennett, outstanding fullback. Amply is the tailback. The wideouts can fly. And the guys up front, big enough. Not as big as we have been seeing lately, but big enough. Because if it doesn't happen in an eye blink, it doesn't happen for the Nolans. Even 10 minutes to go in the first period. Weldon bootlegging it, gets pressure. Runs away from the pressure. Gets his pass off, and it's complete for a first down. Shannon Baker makes the catch. Martin Davis was pursuing him outside linebacker. He had him cold, except he couldn't catch him. Let's go back and look at the touchdown. Here's Buckley now. Right here is Desmond Hart. He's going to go down, break to the inside, and then go back to the outside. Got inside the technique. He jumps on the inside route. Gerbach, outstanding throw over Buckley. Howard's got it. We got one touchdown for Howard and one for the defensive back, Buckley. Goes off the first down play. Pressure again on Weldon. Passes away again to Shannon Baker. He's one of those 4-3-5 guys from Lakeland, Florida, and they've got another first down. Two plays, two first downs. They're gobbling up real estate. And Baker hobbles. He will leave the ball game. Up front, Michigan's got to find a way to get some pressure. They've got to get into that backfield area and disrupt things and it's the linebackers probably that are going to have to do it though Evans and Hutchinson are very very active secondary well those corners have got heat all over them today I mean they're looking at burners coming down and of course the Michigan secondary is not that bad I'll tell you right now here's a quick pop by Weldon pass they're going to have back pass coming up here well right across the field it goes to Weldon the quarterback he's got a convoy and down he goes Ball down at the 10, and they're going to call him down back at the 10. So Casey Weldon threw the ball across the field, and Charlie Ward had come in at a wide out position. Ward throws it back across the field. He's the point guard in basketball and uh, backup quarterback. He has the third string quarterback. He looks downfield temporarily, throws it back. Now watch the white shirts in front of Weldon. That's the entire offensive line that's there. Mancini is 67. A convoy going down the right side. We've had three plays. All three have been passes. The, uh, well, wait, we told you about Bowden. Just, he'll call anything at any time. He has now sown his seeds of doubt. <laughs> Weldon gives it to Amp Lee for the first time today, and it's a two-yard pickup for Lee. If you're going to be conventional and run the ball off the guards and tackles, uh, forget it. You're not going to do it against Michigan. But Bobby Bowden sent a message to uh, Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator, and the Michigan defense is they over-pursue. He threw that ball out there. All 11 guys from Michigan were out there, and that was one of the strengths of Michigan defensively. They hustled to the ball. Bobby turned that around to an advantage for him by throwing it all the way out there and then all the way back and picking up a huge game. Second down and eight from the Michigan nine. Well done to throw it. Sideline incomplete. Ball was out of bounds all the way. Ware was covering on the play. And Amp Lee, the tailback, was trying to reel it in. 85, you saw go in motion on that play, is the tight end Lonnie Johnson, 225-pound sophomore. He can run, too, and he's the tight end. We're going to score against Michigan. So far, it's been through the air this year. Not Third down. Touchdown. Here they come. Not quite. It is Edgar Bennett, the 210-pound fullback, and Bennett is rolled out at the four. They can get a first down at just inside the one. But they'll go for the three instead on fourth down. Tells you about the, the, the way that Bobby Bowden thinks. Again, he calls the plays. Third down, a passing situation. He goes a little misdirection counter run. Dan Mowry 
Redshirt freshman out of Tallahassee. Both place kickers in this game are from Tallahassee High School. This is a 21-yard try. Oh, it's not either. It's touchdown. Florida State, William Floyd takes it in. Pretty cute, huh? William Floyd. Here's Floyd right here. The ball is going to be snapped. He's going to come across the line. The line will block down. Watch as Michigan tries to block it. The, the holder flips it forward. The guard is pulling but gets stumbled, gets tripped up and stumbles, but enough for the touchdown. It's a great call. They had a hit on him. Lance Dotson had a hit on him and didn't hold him, and they missed the extra point. Brad Johnson is the quarterback holder, and it was Johnson who flipped it for the touchdown. Watch right up the middle. The short guy's going to get some penetration, and then the leapers. Now, somebody saw that somewhere in some film somewhere because Shante Peoples goes up and gets both hands on it to block it. State College for Women, 1947. The men arrive. Never been the same. <laughs> At least not on the football field. <laughs> Started playing football the same year. A 13 to 7 uh, ball game as a result of that march by Florida State involving four gimmick plays. Unconventional plays, let's say. Bobby uh, told us yesterday, he says, I didn't hold anything back. He says, I saved some stuff the last couple of weeks, too. Seminoles kick off, and again, the kick is very, very short. Catch called, and they're going to mark him on the 24-yard line. Yes, you can fair catch a kickoff, and that's what he did. This is the touchdown now, the fake field goal and the touchdown. Watch the uh, guard. That's a heart, number 84, that trips up. Take a look top of your screen. The end man on the line, the guard, the, the tight end is going to pull like a guard. And that's Floyd, 44. Just barely gets in for the touchdown. I have a question for you after this play. And it's a question that's been asked a thousand times. Gerbach gives the ball away to Bernie Leggett, the fullback, and Leggett rumbles to the 44-yard line. Why was Van Johnson not down when he took that snap? Because the knee is clearly on the ground. Well, you can do this. In college and high school football, you can, you can do, do this. it for the kick. Yes, for the kick only, for this. But he didn't kick. No, no, well, you can do this. You can fake it and then go. 44-yard line, first down for Michigan. That's the only time you can do that, Keith. Yep. <laughs> Running game, and hit behind the line of scrimmage is Powers, but they can't hold him. Florida State came blowing in. Cheney, the nose guard, got loose, but you can't hold Powers. He's a tough guy, a 205-pound sophomore. No huddle offense going here for Michigan. It is not a hurry up, mind you. It's just no huddle, and it tends to freeze the defense and get people in and out. Pass is thrown complete to Yale Van Dyne. Van Dyne, the senior from Kearney, Missouri, has a first down for the Michigan Wolverines at the Florida State 45. And at six minutes and 43 seconds to go in the first quarter, 20 points on the scoreboard, and Michigan's moving again. <laughs> and so far, you'd have to say that the tempo has been in favor of Florida State because they want to try and outscore them. Jerry Moeller says, I don't want a high-scoring game. Walter Smith, number two, is out there. Desmond Howard comes off the field right now. Van Dyne is the man in motion. They run it for the fullback, Leggett. And he's got about three yards. The temperature today is going to be around 60, 62 degrees, probably a little warmer down inside the stadium. The crowd over 100,000 for the 99th consecutive game. An absolutely marvelous day and a most festive atmosphere. Leggett hurries off the field. They've got three wide outs now. And it's second down and seven for Michigan. Florida State 42. Gerback, good time. Goes underneath 
with it to Power. And Ricky Power turns on the power and gets to about the 35 yard line in the arms of Kirk Carruthers and appears to have another Michigan first down. You're talking about teams hard to score on at North Carolina State. They haven't given up a touchdown on don't think yet this year. It's their fourth ball game. Yeah. Florida State comes into this ball game with a pretty good defense. They're ranked very high in total defense. They're second and third in rushing defense in the NCAA. But they haven't played the likes of the guys in maize and blue. That's for sure. That's for sure. But then on the other hand, Michigan probably hasn't seen this kind of speed in some time either. Leggett is back in for a single back right now for the Wolverines on first down. He's got the ball and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. Firing in is Ostaszewski. And uh, Henry got a piece of him, couldn't hold him as he falls ahead for about a two yard pickup. There's two uh, twin brothers, Henry and Joe, both seniors, both from Barnes and Beach, and both can block out the sun. <laughs> both good players. We were taking that picture yesterday. We, uh, we had one of the twins and didn't have the other. And, and uh, Henry came over and says, well, why don't you just use my brother's picture? We both look alike. <laughs> They're both studying uh, criminal criminology, I guess. They, they, those two guys can keep a neighborhood pretty quiet. Gerback steps away and calls time. I think the uh, clock, uh, play clock was just about to run out on him, and he stepped away from it. And uh, he'll come to the sidelines and talk. Coming up next, we'll have regional football action for you. This is a doubleheader day. You might want to check your the Florida State defense. This was his comment. I would guess that they will blitz us more than any team has in maybe the last few years because they have the skill to cover you man to man. And so it'll be a di little different game. And if we don't, we aren't successful a couple times. I hope we don't get rattled and we'll come back. Well, they haven't done it yet. No, they haven't. But they will. Yep. When you play Bowden uh, teams, uh, you don't really beat Bobby. If he loses, he just kind of runs out of time. And he's not the defensive coordinator, so he's uh, <laughs> his defense may not be as aggressive as his offense is. Take a look at the play selection. Michigan has had two possessions and Florida State only one. One of the reasons why the uh, large difference in total running, total plays. It's second down and nine now. They've got Van Dyne and Howard uh, over here together. Buckley is on Van Dyne right now. That opens Howard to drag the middle. Little crossing pattern. He's a former running back. Now he goes to the sideline. He can't get to it. He was covered that time by McCormick. And uh, the middle was open, wasn't it? Yes, it was, but the, the play was to the outside. We're probably going to be with uh, Howard all day long. McCormick just slides to the outside. He was in zone coverage, and the, the route that they had that covered, uh, just, the, just the defensive call had that play covered. Yep. Ball is on the 34-yard line. It is third and nine, and Powers comes out. That leaves Leggett as the lone back. And he gets Smith on the field, number two, bottom of the screen. Here they come. Here's your blitz, goes to Howard, umpire got in the way, Florida State takes him down at the 35-yard line and a penalty flag. I'm not sure that Devolt didn't turn up field. The tight end went in motion. He may have turned a little too soon. It was all, he, he was blocking, Keith. He was blocking, yep. yeah. Yeah, it was interference. He was blocking downfield. Five yards, back Yep, well. So that's a five yard pickup. It's a wide Michigan. receiver screen right here. He's going to come down. Now watch the, the tight end in motion. He's going to come over and really try to block 
The defensive man is trying to cover Howard. Watch him now. Watch him. It's a, that's a pick. That's a pick. That's, well, I take that back. The ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Is it? And in college and high school football, if it's Not thrown behind the line of scrimmage, you can go downfield and block. Not a pick. Not a pick. Good defense. Third and five. is overthrown intended for Van Dyne. It'll bring up fourth down. 13 to 7 ball game. Florida State leading in the first quarter of play with 3.48 to go. Yale Van Dyne replacing Derek Alexander at a wide out position. And they miss Alexander in his speed, his running ability. He kept people off Howard's back. They couldn't double up on Howard so much with Alexander around. This is a considerable try for uh, J.D. Carlson. 47 yarder. The hold for Michigan is Ken Solomon, quarterback. J.D. hits it. He hits the crossbar. Good. Bounced over. <laughs> you know, we've had a lot of things happen already here in this ballgame. We're not even through the first quarter. So you get a Michigan bounce, and it's a 13 to 10 ball game at 3.42 to go in the first period. You mentioned J.D. Carlson from Tallahassee, his parents. No, he had a chance to go to Yale. He was very, his mother was very upset when he turned down Yale to come to Michigan. Got to be some mixed feelings in that family today. Hey, more. And for Florida State, Tiger McMillan, 33, and Felix Harris, 24. He's tough. Out to the 33-yard line. The Honda Scholar Athlete Award brought to you by American Honda, supporting amateur athletics. This week's award goes to Dave Ritter, the University of Michigan. Dave's uh, graphic design major, 3.50 grade point average. He's out of Hickory Hills, Illinois. From the 33-yard line, first down for the Seminoles. A conventional start for this possession, given the Amp Lee, the tailback. And he picks up the uh, better part of three yards on the carry. <laughs> Conventional start. <laughs> Florida State's got the ball. Put your seatbelt on and hold on. Here we go. You know, Keith, uh, both teams had a week off. They had two weeks to prepare for this game. And I think it shows in the first quarter already. A lot of, uh, a lot of things that we have not seen have come, uh, come out in this first quarter. 23 points on the scoreboard for the two teams. 13 to 10, Seminole lead. Weldon back to throw it. Sets up a screen. They've got it set up well. This is Amp Lee. And Amp is run out of bounds, but not until he has crossed midfield and stepped out on the 44-yard line of Michigan. Just a screen pass, Amp Lee, a great receiver. He runs so easily. There's the uh, yardage and numbers on Carlson's kick. And he doesn't overrun, Keith. He waits for his blockers. He's got plenty of left. Once they make their blocks, he can take advantage of the block. Lee again. Big hole on the left side. Bounces off the tackle. Still going. Quite a remarkable run by Amp Lee. He took what they gave him. They couldn't take his feet away from him, and he just kept on tiptoeing until he was in the end zone. 
to the right side that we're looking at it. Number 36, that's Morrison. Should have filled on the outside. He was an anxious linebacker. Went inside, runs around number 20, that's Brown. Now he just does a bunch of things on his own. Stops, waits, cuts back, doesn't overrun it. Has enough speed left to get in the end zone. Dick is no good. Myrie can't get the ball up at all. I mean, that's hit the crossbar and bounced straight back at him. The first one was blocked, and this one was hit so low that it went under the Michigan defender. Mari had trouble in his first game against BYU. He's a new kicker this year. He missed four times on extra points. He's a redshirt freshman. Look Take a look thing. at it. ground ground level. Just kicks it low. Doesn't hit it good. Nope. And nobody got near that. He hit the ball too high. Maybe he hit a little fat and then bounced his foot into the middle of the football. He's a little excited. 19 to 10, Florida State lead. Here's Jack. And Keith, if this isn't bad enough, the score for the Michigan Wolverines, their key player, Desmond Howard, during that last exchange was sitting on the bench. They had to wrap his side down almost by his hip, down in the lower rib area, in ice. He took a real heavy hit there. They say it's been bruised, but he will be back. But you know it'll be tough. Well, he's out there now to have a try at kick returning. These kickoffs, Keith, uh, they've been just uh, pooching him very high. They're not going to kick to Desmond Howard. They saw what he did uh, a couple of weeks ago. We mentioned he has six touchdowns in the first two ball games. Four of them. Now he has seven. He has one in this ball game. He had four. He had four coming in by reception. One on a reverse and one on a kickoff return, and another one here today on a reception. So seven of the eight touchdowns that uh, Michigan has scored this year has been because of Desmond Howard. That was a heck of a run by Amp Lee. 44 yard touchdown Gallup. They don't kick to Howard again. It's short for Leggett the fullback and Leggett has no room. If his own people are in his way, they don't give him any room to run the ball. What they're doing, they're kicking the ball so high that Florida State has the speed that by the time the ball comes down, he almost has to fair catch it, and they're giving him, say, all right, we'll give you the 30, the 35-yard line every time, but we will not kick it to Desmond Howard. Now, let's see what the Wolverines can do here. The last time, uh, they didn't go to the run as much, and uh, they were not as successful. Let's see if they stay with the run more in this possession, starting at their own 31-yard line. Starting with three wide receivers. They are. Go to Powers, and Powers will get it up to the 34-yard line. Bobby Bond talking about this Michigan offense had this comment yesterday. They, they really got a great offense. Uh, <clears throat> big offensive line with an outstanding turn out nowhere. You can't play none on one on that other one either, you know. And so they control that football until you start sneaking some more people for to stop it, and that guy's one-on-one -on -one out there. It's a, it's a headache. It's 60 minutes of a headache. Right now, Florida State is sitting on a 19 to 10 lead. Uh, Michigan just missed a, a pass all the way across the field as Buckley just absolutely tied up Desmond Howard. He wasn't anywhere near the pattern that he wanted to run. And besides that, the Wolverines have an illegal procedure. I like, I like what Bobby says. You can't play none on one out here on Howard. <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta worry about him. Ball is resting at the 34-yard line. Two minutes and 10 seconds to go in a very long first quarter. But exciting. I don't think the forward pass uh, is your primary weapon, though, for Michigan. I, I think that's... No, they don't, want it. they don't want this type of ball game, Keith. That's for sure. Just keep it in the air, and he's going to go down it off but he's under enough pressure and having to run with it he can't hit the old man dying and the pursuit was coming from the blind side of Reggie Freeman well they had some pressure on him that time the five men coming after him a little bit of a blitz forces him outside the pocket one thing that Gerbach does not do well and that is move around he is not a good runner Casey no, no. Weldon is a, is a big time what Michigan does with uh, Mr. Buckley here as Kona will punt it. He's hit it four times this season, averaging 48 yards. 
normally gets pretty good hang time on it. Got a return on. Yep. Good high kick. Buckley from the 27. Back to the 24. Well, that's good coverage by the Wolverines as Mark Elliott, the baby brother of Matt Elliott, got on field to make the tackle. And the big thrill for Mark Elliott was after being called in to snap for the injury of Steve Brevard, he got to go eat at the training table. <laughs> We'd like to pause right here five seconds to let our ABC stations tell you who they are. Has the ball. Shannon Baker is back in at a wide out. After having left, limping a little bit, he's number one and he can really run. 19 to 10 as the Gator, as the uh, gambling, gambling uh, Florida State Seminoles go to work. There was the first time that they had some real pressure on the quarterback Casey Weldon. Dwayne Ware, a quarterback, flips. Yep. And he got him just as he released it, but the pass was incomplete. When you get into a situation... That linebacker and the corner on that side can switch assignments. That time Ware got in there and put some pressure on Casey Weldon. Back goes Casey to throw again. Pressure from the backside. Gets his pass away underneath to the fullback Edgar Bennett. And Edgar's very close to a first down. Weldon's a gamer. I mean, he hangs in there to the last millisecond and got his man. Weldon has not thrown an interception this year. He has thrown seven touchdown passes. And Bennett, the fullback, is an outstanding receiver. If you take a look at what Florida State ranks in the NCAA uh, national rankings offensively. Both these receivers, Keith, have caught a lot of passes. Casey was married a couple of years ago. He and Lori have a baby daughter. He did not, in fact, he was thinking about transfer and going someplace where he could play because he was behind Peter Tom Willis, then he was behind Brad Johnson, who's a great big strapping fellow with a yep. cannon arm. Yep. And then uh, six games in the, with six games to play last year, he got the starting ball, and he's won them all up to today. Waited. Right now he's leading by nine. He waited his turn. He was around for three and a half years before Bowden said, go, go try your luck. I mentioned... Uh, I meant to say that both of the running backs are good receivers, outstanding receivers, as you take a look at the total yards already here in the first quarter is not even completed. We saw the measurement was just short. Amp Lee will not get there. He didn't get it. They roll him back. Where number eight was right up in the melee. Well, when you start playing power football, you're playing right down the uh, alley of this Michigan Wolverine team. It's a, you know, a team from the Big Ten, the Midwest, you're going to play power physical football. Florida State is more speed and quickness. It's not their game. Scott Blair, a walk-on senior, in the punt it. Knocks it out of there. Desmond Howard looking for help. Pops out. Comes back to the 42-yard line. So you kind of hold your breath if you're rooting for the other side when both Howard and Buckley get their hands on a punt to return it. There's a big play defensively on that last Florida State third down situation. Eric Anderson, number 37, slides along the line of scrimmage that time. And Morrison, 36, the other inside linebacker, is there to help him. Both inside linebackers got down the line free of any offensive lineman and made the play. The thing that was interesting, too, is both corners were up on the line of scrimmage to keep anybody from getting outside on uh -huh. too. They Had were... to go inside. Yep. This is Powers. And Ricky Powers picks up a couple of yards before Carruthers 45 is there to get him. Kirk Carruthers got he was on Duffy Dory, his coaching staff up at uh, Michigan State. And George Perlis, now the current coach up at East Lansing, was the best man at Carruthers' mom and dad's wedding. But Kirk left. He's Lansing to go to school in Tallahassee. Powers again. Nothing there. There's a loss 
of a yard or so on the play. And finally, the first quarter comes to an end. But it was an adventure. <laughs> 19 to 10, Florida State lead. Great big old bowl, but the home folks are behind by nine points as we start the second quarter of play. Florida State leading 19 to 10, third and 11 for Michigan. So the first play of the second quarter has got to be a big one if the Wolverines want to keep the ball. Devote, the tight ends in motion. Gerback getting pressure. Down he goes. Coming right up the middle, number 94. Patrick McIntyre. And that'll take care of that. The Michigan punting team heading on the field. Well, the reason that happened, Keith, is that it was a wide receiver screen. To the left side, nobody's going to block. The offensive linemen don't even block these guys because it's a wide receiver screen, and the quarterback is supposed to avoid the defensive men coming. You're supposed to get the ball off before they get there. Chris Stapleton is in the punt. Didn't get much of it. Bouncing ball downfield for Buckley. Well, Buckley gets a crack. One man. And finally runs out of real estate. And a penalty flag is going to be thrown probably against the Michigan man that hit him out of bounds. But Buckley is exciting. 37-yard punt and a 30-yard return. I expect that's what it is because the hit was made uh, well out of bounds, and it was Eric Anderson. Dead ball. Yep, that's what it is. Terrell Buckley. An outstanding cornerback also runs back punts as you've seen. He was a second team All-American last year and could become the third first team All-American cornerback for Florida State in the last four years. Deion Sanders and Leroy Butler were the other two. Yeah, Terrell doesn't have him in a change yet. <laughs> Not yet. Huh? <laughs> well, he's had a big impact on this ball game already. And we're only starting the second quarter. 24-yard line of Michigan. First down for the nose. Weldon throwing. Pressure zone. Pass away. It is incomplete. It was intended for his tight end, Warren Hart. Well, let's take a break for a second and look at the first quarter stats. First of all, look at the bottom. Time of possession in favor of Michigan. That's what they wanted. The turnover that you see for Michigan turned into a touchdown. Go up to total plays, 26 for Michigan, but Florida State only 13, but Florida State leads 19 to 10. That's because when they've gotten the ball, they've scored very quickly, and of course, the turnover uh, for Florida State got seven points. You got Amp Lee, the tailback, out here in a wide receiver position now. Weldon back. Is thrown underneath the lead. Lee runs to the 20, and he is hammered at the 20. That's a pickup of about four yards, and Eric Anderson's the man there first. Here's the latest play, Keith, that's in bold. Here's the wide receiver. He's going to come down here on a screen. What they're going to do is let everybody through. Both teams have run this play already. Watch it. The defensive line comes through. It's a loop. Now watch the offensive line go down. The linebackers avoid the blocks of the offensive line. That is one of the, the, the new plays of this 91 season. Everybody seems to be running. Call it third down and seven from the 20. Weldon's pass, wide open, tight end, Warren Hart, touchdown, Florida State. They're just eating them up offensively. going to be from the left side of your screen. Number eight there, the defensive back, is where the tight end releases inside of him and goes straight down the field. There's nobody in the middle of the field. Weldon reads it. And a great call and a great read. And the score jumps out to 25-10. Now, the extra point has become a considerable adventure for Bobby Bowden's folks. Maori has had one block, hit the crossbar on the other one. So this time, they'll go for two. intended for Edgar Bennett the fullback Bennett had his hands on it at the goal line but Eric Anderson separated man and ball and the score remains 25 10. Why 
the M out there in the middle of the field. This is new grass. It was just put in this summer, and to, to put that heavy paint on the M, block M, would, uh, they were afraid, kill the uh, grass. So uh -huh. they did not uh, put the heavy stuff on. They'll be able to do that probably next year. The stadium looks so much, paint. so much more homey with, with real grass rather than that artificial yep. turf. Yep. You know what, Keith? Yep. Say the running backs love it. Oh, yeah. All right, here comes Florida State. And they're still not going to kick that thing down to Howard. Yale Van Dyne comes up and makes the fair catch call. And there's a penalty flag. Fair catch. You got to give the man room to, to catch it. We have a five yard interference with the opportunity by the kicking team. That's what the call is. Go five. So you can fair catch a kickoff. Let's go back and look at this. You be the quarterback. Here's Weldon. He's looking straight down the field. Now the defensive men are here. There's nobody in the center of the field. The tight end is here. He's going to go straight down the middle. Watch as Weldon. Looks straight down, the tight end gets into that open spot, lays it over linebackers between defensive backs. That's why he is the top rated quarterback in the country. On first down, Wolverines go to Ricky Powers, and Powers is hit head on by Leon Fowler. The uh, free safety coming up from his support position. This offensive possession for Michigan starting just short of the 47. The gain is up just past the 49, so give him two. Of course, only 23 yards on that last play. It was set up by Buckley's 30-yard uh, punt return, plus the 15 yards of the penalty, the personal foul penalty at the end of it. Howard goes in motion. Gerback keeps it. Now he throws it, and he throws it behind the tight end, Tony McGee. So they again flush the Michigan quarterback out. He is not as accurate on the run as he is in the pocket. And good coverage, Keith. Anytime Michigan gets outside the pocket, you're really helping Florida State because they've got the speed to stay with these wide receivers. Gerback's last six attempts has completed one for a minus yard. Minus one. So it's third down. And about eight. State 42 yard line, Corey Fuller on the tackle for the Seminoles. Seminoles coming after uh, Gerbach, blitzing, he moved around in the pocket just a little bit, just enough time to get the ball off. I think they're now convinced that they can go ahead and play man. They can go after Gerbach, get in his face, and play man in the secondary. And Michigan on its side of the ball has to say, hey, listen, let's play our brand of football. First. Nope, gonna throw it. Howard's down there. Buckley's with it. Touchdown. Michigan. What a marvelous catch by Desmond Howard. Incredible. Watch this. Two. Two All Americans, two former future pro football uh, number one draft choices right here going up against each other. Buckley, 27, has a shot at knocking the ball down, misses it, and Howard makes the play. Just outstanding. How much more of this can they provide us in uh, a little over a quarter? They've really put on a show. J.D. Carlson gets the extra point through there. 12.03 to go in the first half. We've had 42 points scored already. It's 25-17, Florida State. One athlete, many events. The energy to challenge not just one, but all limits. At Texaco, we share that energy in all that we do. 
the energy to create innovative products like Haviland Formula 3 motor oil, the energy to lead the way in exploration, conservation, alternate energy, the energy to go as far as we can, and then go even further. Bonneville. The art of excitement. The science of control. The new Bonneville. A higher level of excitement. What's new tonight? I love you. More than you can imagine. What did you say? What did you hear? With the season premiere of Who's the Boss on its new night, then... The Seavers would like to extend to you a formal invitation. That's right. We're moving to Saturday nights. Is that why we're dressed up in these monkey suits? <laughs> yeah, I can barely breathe in this thing. You're supposed to take this out, bonehead. Growing Pains, Saturdays on ABC, right after Who's the Boss. But come as you are. He's now out on the field, and I say that only because it's news. He's doing the kicking off. Whereas Albertson had done it previously. Macmillan 33, Harris 24 deep. 25-17 ball game, Florida State. Carlson knocks it on down to the six-yard line for Harris. Look out! My goodness, he almost popped out of there. This business of uh, Gerbach and Howard playing catch has been going on a long time at St. Joseph's High School, Willoughby Hills in the Cleveland, Ohio area. Howard was a tailback and a safety, and uh, here he goes out of the backfield, and Gerbach hits him. And Gerbach, in his senior year, threw for 15 touchdowns, and he had learned how already at that tender been, age. Been diving that. for balls <laughs> for about six years, hadn't he? That's right. Boy, if that ain't great stuff, if those two guys, uh, Howard and Buckley, aren't uh, number one draft choices someday, somebody's missing a, missing a call on those two. Seminoles go to work. Give it an amp lead, the tailback, a little spin, and amp is up to the 39-yard line for a pickup of about five yards. Lee is 42. 22 is Edgar Bennett. running a little tender on his left ankle, but he's in there. He's one of those burners. Weldon's got it to throw it. Down the middle, short. Incomplete pass. It bounced in front of uh, McCorvey. Number 88, here's Jack. Keith, if you ask Desmond Howard what is the most spectacular catch he's ever made, he doesn't even include one in football. It involves this hat and his buddy Trip Welburn two years ago when they went to a Michael Jackson concert. It seems that Michael threw his hat out into the crowd, and the man that made the diving catch, number 21, Desmond Howard. <laughs> Just shows that he's multi-talented. Third and five. That's good to Baker. And it's good to the 49, and it's good for a first down. In front of Lance Dutton. Lloyd Carr, right there with the headphone on, defensive coordinator, told me that in his 12 years at the University of Michigan, he said this Florida State offense is the toughest he has seen to defend in all of his years. And I think uh, the points that Florida State has put up on the board would, would bear that out. He thinks that Bobby Bowden in calling plays is second to none in the college football team. Well, you need speed to make it work, and boy, they've got it. <laughs> Weldon, back to throw. Gets a little heat. Gets it off. Dropped by Lee. Dropped by Lee. Steve Morrison, inside linebacker, planted Casey Weldon. I mean, he put him on the ground and left the print of his body. Casey got up a little tenderly. Tonight, ABC Saturday night lineup. Second down and ten. Lee, look out. We 
saw what Ant Lee can do a little while ago when he went through that entire Michigan secondary by himself, 44 yards for a touchdown. But the thing that makes Florida State offensively so tough, Keith, is that they have balance. They not only can run the football, but they can throw it, and Weldon can get outside the pocket. Shannon Baker has left again, that ankle very sore, so he hopped off the field. Corral is in, Eric Corral. Third down, four. Pass intercepted by Morrison, the inside linebacker. He's got one man to beat, but he doesn't have the foot speed to do it. And it's Michigan run down inside the Florida State 20 yard line. That's another one of those passes that quarterback will look at it and wish he hadn't thrown it because he threw it right to it. Right. Here's Morrison right here. As uh, Weldon drops back, he's going to come over here and watch when the ball comes over. The interception is going to be made. He's trying to get the ball to his tight end. Good play by Morrison. Good uh, position on the field. And now when the party's over, just get out and don't cough it up. That's the first interception of Casey Weldon this season. And Michigan with an opportunity. Florida State caught in the neutral zone as the outside uh, backer at the top of the screen tried to make a move and uh, Matt Elliott wasn't going to let him off the hook. He caught him in there and snapped that ball. Weldon was trying to hit the wide receiver on a slant on that interception and the linebacker Morrison. That's on Howard Dinkins. Let's go back to the interception to the right side of your screen. 36 is Morrison. Now watch him just keep flowing out. He sees the ball all the way. The receiver right there cuts right in front of him. Good positioning, good discipline by Morrison not to jump up on the receiver that was out in the flat. He was huffing and puffing, though. It just ran out of speed. <laughs> he was looking for somebody to tackle. <laughs> All right, it is first down and five from the 15 after the offside penalty. Durback gives it to Ricky Powers. He cuts it down to the 10-yard line and a first down. When Ricky Powers gets that movement and then is able to plant and come back, he doesn't weigh 205 pounds. He weighs 255 pounds. Well, the thing that he does well, too, Keith, is he is not too quick. A lot of backs will get the ball and run up the back, and he waits to see if something else might open up. And he is very good at sliding one position over, a, a hole or a man or two, to pick up uh, an area that may uh, be open where he can run the football. He does it very well. They don't give him the first down. It looks like he's about two or three inches short of it. So it'll be second down and inches from the 10. The offensive front for the Wolverines. Big Strippenack, number 75, 325. Cocoso, Doherty, Matt Elliott. Debolt, the tight end. Here back to Powers, coming around the right side. Powers is going to be hit, but not taken down. Ricky Powers just simply out-muscled the Seminole tackler and got his first down at the nine-yard line. Michigan, eight. Does, Michigan does not want to play the game east to west, though, Keith. Anytime you pitch that ball and go around in, you're allowing the foot speed for Florida State to run and catch up with you. Their best game is straight ahead if they're going to run it. 15 carries for Ricky Powers now and 51 yards. And they have so much speed that they can double you. By the time you get to where you want to make your turn, they got two or three people there for you. I'd run right behind Composo and Strepanak, and that's exactly where Powers goes. But there's only a yard there as the Seminole just filled it. McCorvey. One of the safeties is up there. Jones Carruthers is up the there linebacker. too. Marvin, yeah. Marvin Jones is 55. He's a sophomore. His brother, big brother, Fred Jones, was a great player at Florida State as an inside linebacker. 
as you look at Jones. He started as a freshman last year. Led the team in tackles as a true freshman. In fact, was a third-team All-American. Second down and goal to go. 8 5 to play in the first half. Florida State leading 25 to 17. They're back to throw it. He throws to Leggett. Leggett, touchdown. Got into the corner. There is a penalty flag on the field. Thrown right down on the sideline. It's thrown right over there near where the touchdown occurred also. Maybe defensive holding. Might be illegal use of hands. Very well be illegal use of hands. An illegal block. The flag will be waved off in as much as No flag. You pick it up. And it stands as touchdown Michigan. is Debo. Now watch 40. Uh, Leggett coming out of the backfield. Oh, a huge gaping hole to throw through for the quarterback. They're going to go for two. And they're going out of no huddle offense. Florida State trying to substitute some people. And now timeout has been called. At 7.52 to go, 25-23. charged with the timeout they didn't have the people out on the field they wanted to defend against a two-point conversion try by the Michigan Wolverines a two-pointer successful will tie it at 25 how many times have you seen a uh, Big Ten football team the quality of Michigan with uh, in a first half involving a total of 50 points and still eight minutes to play Gary Moeller's in that rarefied air of those high point games <laughs> he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't want this Gerbach out of the shotgun, trips to the right side or bottom of the screen, and now this in Van Dyne the other way. He throws it up there to Howard. Howard is running and running, and he doesn't get there. It's Leon Fowler making the tackle and stopping him a yard or so short. What do you do? You throw it out wide to your best uh, player. You give it to Howard behind the line of scrimmage. Let him come all the way back. See what he can do. Lined up as a wide receiver. Van Dyne goes out to block. Now he's got the ball. He, nothing's good over there. Come all the way back across. It's either going to be two points or nothing. And Fowler, number three, comes up and clips him. Good defense. Well, the ball was tipped when he threw it. That's it why there was nothing on the other side. Yeah, it slowed it down getting there, yeah. Gerbach with yeah. a good block. That's good football. This is a good football game, Keith. 7.52 to play in the first half. Florida State 25, Michigan 23. Somehow, you, you, don't, you don't seem to think that missing an extra point now is going to make any difference no. because points are kind of cheap early in this ball game. It may, however, uh, they may get a little more pressure as the day goes on. May yeah. slow up. You can't expect this pace to continue the entire ball game. J.D. Carlson has come back out on the field. He kicked off the last time. You need two kickers today. They're <laughs> bo both going to be tired. That sends McMillan 33 and Harris 24 deep for Florida State. Carlson hammers it. Hooks it over there to Harris. He takes it on the move. Almost dropped it. Gets a little daylight. Florida State's return team pretty good. They give the guy some room and he comes up across the 25 to the 26. Next Saturday, ABC's College Football will bring you the Florida State Seminoles against Syracuse, 10th rank, or Michigan against Iowa in the Big Ten down at Iowa City. And that's two bear traps for these two teams, Syracuse and Iowa, both tough. Out west, you got a Pac-10 game, California and UCLA in the mountains. Air Force hosting Wyoming. Check the local listing. That's a lot of good football right there. Woo. First down for the Seminoles. This is Ant Lee. Fumbles the ball. Michigan's after it. Florida State man went underneath and I think got it. 
Michigan man was falling right toward it, but one of the Seminoles came underneath him and got control of the ball. Well, something really knocked it loose. This is something really unusual for Florida State. When you see one of their running backs fumble the football right there, Amp Lee, that's his first fumble. Amp got it back to Yeah. That's his first fumble. Take a look in two years. Weldon back to throw. Underneath he goes. Put down immediately after making a catch on a crossing pattern. Number seven, Terrell, Eric Terrell, and Lance Dutton, the senior cornerback, got him. It'll bring up third down and seven for Florida State. Amp Lee had not fumbled all of last year. In fact, did not fumble since the uh, freshman year. He had gone 231 chances without fumbling a football. You saw his first one here in a long time. Weldon gets it away, and Edgar Bennett has the first down for Florida State. That's one of the remarkable things about Edgar Bennett. He's in traffic, people trying to knock his head off, but he always gets just enough. Edgar Bennett is, is the number one rated fullback in the country coming out because he's a very, very versatile fullback. He can catch the football, he can block, and he can run. He came in to this ball game with 73 career receptions and has caught three or four here today already. First down for the Seminoles at their own 39-yard line, leading 25-23. Good protection for Casey Weldon. Pass is caught by Amp Lee. The Michigan defender fell down, and it's now almost only where speed keeps it from being a touchdown. Comes in defense over there on the sidelines by the Wolverines. Their man fell down. The play goes for 56 yards before Dwayne Ware brings him down. Well, here you see the running back, Amp Lee, on a defensive back. He's going to come down, break inside, and go to the outside. Just simple spreading your wide, your running back out to a wide receiver, and his ability to catch the ball and run routes allows you to do this. Otis Williams, the man that fell down, he got away from him, and Weldon is now 10 of 16 for 160 yards. I'll go back to what I said in the opening, Keith. This backfield is the best backfield in the country. First and goal from the five for the Knowles. This is Lee. Look at those feet. Touchdown. He walked in. He jumped around that quarterback like uh, the defensive man wasn't even there. He does it so easily. It's deceptively easy. Watch it. When, he, when you see the replay, watch the man's feet. Watch his feet. Watch you make the defensive man miss. It's a little toss. Seven comes in, that's Terrell. Now watch Dotton, 22, makes a little move to the outside. Good blocking inside. Dotton well, is they a make, senior. It, make it look easy. Yep. Dotton's a senior, one of the better ones around this neck of the wood. Well, Murray has kicked an extra point. But they wave it off. He got it up, but he didn't get it in the middle. So he's still unlucky. Florida State University is advancing boldly into the 21st century. On 23, eight-point lead for Florida State over the Michigan Wolverines. They had snapped the ball thinking that he was going to get him offside. McIntosh got back, and now Moeller thinks that he didn't. But the play didn't get much. About a yard or so, a yard and a half. Now they're looking at third down and long. From the 14 yard line. Third and nine. Drop. Covered. Was it a catch and a fumble? Or was it an incomplete pass? They call it a completion to Van Dyne, covered by Walter Smith. Van Dyne on a slant. Yeah, he had it. Ball is knocked out, and Smith very alertly jumps on it. And so it is first and goal for Michigan at the Florida State three. And this is already the most combined points ever scored in this stadium in the first half of the ball game. Look at a yard. I mean, 
they put some holes and some helmets on that one. Marvin Jones, 55. You could hear it all the way to Ypsilanti. And Leggett is hurt. <laughs> and it takes a while to clear your head. That's that's for sure. But let's see about the condition of Leggett as he uh, a minute and 59 to play in the first half of the ball game. 31-23, Florida State. The ball belongs to Michigan. Second down and goal at the Florida State two-yard line. He powers the lone setback. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The Rutters, 45 is on top. And uh, 36, Alexander is on the bottom. The line surge, Florida State wins the battle of the line of scrimmage. There's a mix-up in the backfield. Not good timing on the play. I find it incredible that Michigan doesn't believe they can stick it in the end zone here. Leggett comes back into the ball game with that huge line in front of him. First down and goal at the three, outsizing the other team. And what Florida this. State is doing is slanting, getting into the gaps with their speed, and that's causing some problems for that big offensive line. Michigan will talk on the sideline. Ball, third down and goal from the, actually now, on that last play, they lost yardage. It's back on the three-yard line. There they are patting down some of the grass that popped up. And both teams are over on the sideline uh, talking to their respective coordinators. Gary Moeller, Moeller handles the calls offensively for Michigan, and Mickey Andrews is the defensive coordinator for Florida State. Elliott, Picozo, Strepanak. Big guys to the right. It is Skeen and Doherty on the left side. Bobby went down and told him to keep two guys on Desmond Howard. <laughs> Do not leave Mr. Howard unescorted. Well, Howard's behind. Right now is in the backfield hiding behind. Now he shifts out. Leaving Ricky Powers as Malone back. Fake it to Powers. Lob it. Intercepted in the end zone. Bad pass. Nothing on it. Just threw a knuckleball up there. And Howard Dinkins, the linebacker, had dropped to cover the tight end. And Dinkins made the catch. And uh, Michigan is turned away. Not a good pass by Gerback. He had to get it up in the air over the linebacker. And he didn't do it. Well, here is who he's trying to go to right here. That's McGee. He's going to come around the end, the tackle, and come back out here on the outside. He's going to do play action away. He's trying to get lost. The, the, uh, the uh, linebacker, Dinkins, 89, does a nice job of staying with his man. Doesn't be, is not fooled by the play action. Third down and three. You're not going to be uh, fooling anybody on play action. Gerbach underthrows this ball. Got plenty of room, too. Yeah, you can that's put cool. it on up and you let I don't, the tight end like run that. a little. That, I'd much rather have gone after my uh, my main man, Howard, out there one-on-one. Yep. -on -one. First down, Florida State at the 20-yard line. Casey Weldon gives it to Amp Lee, and Amp's around the corner. And across the 30, all the way out to the 33-yard line. You know, not only do they not get the touchdown on that play, Keith, but they, they also don't get the three points out of it. Right. Come up empty. And it's a big momentum change uh, going into halftime. Florida State uh, is not tied. Uh, they don't even uh, have to fight off that three-point field goal. They, big interception going in uh, with the momentum. Amp Lee, a big first half, 74 yards on the ground and 79 yards receiving. Kevin Knox, three down at the bottom of the screen as the wide out. Weldon gives it away. And Edgar Bennett. We'll have a yard at the most with the clock running inside uh, 15 seconds now. 31-23 ball game. Game summary there you can see. It's, there have been some mistakes, yes, but there have been some spectacular plays. And the two touted advertised uh, people have delivered in today's first half. 
31-23, Florida State leads Michigan back with a halftime after this message and the words from our ABC station. universities are all ranked in the top 15 with Florida State at number one. FSU is led by Bobby Bowden who's been so successful during his 16-year reign he was offered a lifetime contract. FSU has been ranked in the top five for the past four seasons. Coach we've got FSU at number one, Miami at number two and until last week Florida was number five. Why are the Florida schools so dominant? The only thing I can think of is the state has gotten so big and so strong. Gosh, we've got 15 million people now. We're all of a sudden, we're about the fourth or fifth largest state in the United States. So you've got these, they just keep building high schools and get more and more athletes who are, who are in great competition. And it's just, there's enough boys to go around. I think that's a big, big reason. The Gators were number five before their loss to Syracuse and are the only team to have at least one player selected in the first round nine years in a row. Julie, I, I think we emphasize football down here maybe more than the other sports. Uh, I've heard some people say there are three sports in the state of Florida, high school football, college football, and professional football. Uh, but certainly there are many talented players, and most all the northern schools come down here to recruit because of the abundance of talent down here. So I think that's where it all starts. Always a contender, Miami is ranked number two and dominated the 80s by winning three national championships. Quarterback Gino Toretta came here from California. The amount of talent here in the state of Florida is just incredible. And, and any time a school can get the top kids out of Florida, they're definitely going to be a top contender for the national championship. It's different. Uh, the athletes uh, seem to be better, much more speed. Uh, they have spring football. Uh, in, in the high schools for a month in May, and, and football is taken very seriously by the, by the athletes in the states. High school programs such as Carroll City take advantage of the climate with a month of spring football, almost doubling their training time. And is it ever big? Where I'm from, Michigan, you know, you, you don't have uh, spring football. You can do almost anything year-round. You know, maybe something in the water, but I don't know. Uh, all of all three schools, you know, recruit heavily in the state, you know, and, and fortunately, you know, because of the success, they're able to, to, to venture out of state and get the best athletes from the out of state to come here. Be it Gator, Seminole, or Hurricane, maybe the most popular reason for coming to Florida is the weather. I wanted to go to a place where it was very hot. You know, I'd rather play here in the Sunshine State. I went to Syracuse. That was my first visit. I got off the plane, real cold. No way. Florida is my home. So high school football is the key, and right now Florida, more than any other state in the country, has the highest percentage of high school players going on to play somewhere in the CFA. The big key is the spring football that Absolutely. they play. Thank you very much. One sad note to tell you about in college football. Funeral services are being held today in League City, Texas, for Texas A&M football player James Glenn, a freshman walk-on place kicker who died before practice on Wednesday. An autopsy did not reveal a likely cause of death. In tribute to Glenn, the A&M team will wear a patch with his number 30 on their sleeves the rest of this year. And all of us here at ABC Sports send our condolences to the Glenn family.